Okay, so just if you know, join, the conversation will ask you to step up to the, yeah, the table right. so that the mic can pick yeah. you up a little better. Right. All right. Yeah, and just make sure that you sort of use a, a voice that carries so that it picks it up a little yeah. easier. It's locked. It's locked. They haven't unlocked it. Come here. I don't know. Will Smith on? I don't see five. Yeah. Is is uh Ingrid or R Ingrid or Will on there? Um let's see, I haven't seen either one of them yet, but let's see. Nope. So you have five participants in and showing four. Oh, we're the fifth. We're live fifth. now. But so you know. have a okay. we're live and not muted. I know. Uh, William is just entering now. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Beaufort County School District Board of Education Operations Committee meeting. Uh, this meeting is being broadcast on the Beaufort County School District YouTube channel, um, and it is being held in a hybrid setting. Um, I believe we have a quorum. Mr. Smith, are you online? He didn't lock it. He was coming in, but he's not on now. Okay. Hi, Ms. Boatwright. Thank you. We do have a form now. Yes. Happy Wednesday. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Again, nice. um, we have a quorum now. We've started, Ms. Boatwright. We're, we're live, just so you know. That's okay. Um, so we, we have Ms. Boatwright here and myself as part of the operations committee meeting. And then Mr. Um, Smith may be joining us uh, very soon. So if we could um, go ahead and call this meeting to order, and as is our tradition, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. All right. First order of business is to approve today's agenda. Do we have a motion to uh, approve? So okay, we have a motion by Ms. Boatwright and I will second it. Um, any discussion about the agenda? No. Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, unanimous, thank you. Ms. Cushenberry, do we have any public comment? No, ma'am. Wonderful, uh, this is not wonderful, but thank you very much. <laughs> all right, the next order of business is to go through our meeting minutes. Um, Ms. Boatwright, do we have a motion to approve our May 13th Joint yes. Finance and Operation Committee meeting minutes? I move that we approve the May 13th Joint Finance and Operation Committee meeting minutes. Okay, very good. I second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can June just 9th. Down just a little bit. Can we just do all of <laughs> I, I really. If you are good with that, I okay, will. Yeah, that's yes. yeah. Okay. So moved. So moved. So that will be the May 13th, June 9th, June 16th, and June 25th Got it. committee meeting minutes. Second, made, motions made by Ms. Boatwright. I seconded the motion. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. I, I think we should maybe move the update on St. Helena Gym towards the end of the agenda if Mr. Smith's not on yet. Um, Can we do that? Yeah. Yes, we absolutely yeah. should do that. He was on when we he first was, started. He was trying to come in. Okay. And then, all right. He, there he is. He's trying again. So if he gets in, I do have people that will kind of know their parts are late. Uh -huh. So if he is able to join, I try to do it. Here he is. One's here. When he is joining. He's here. Wonderful. Okay. So. Um, Mr. Smith, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, my, yeah excuse me about that. My computer that was acting up. Yes, to understand. I'm glad that you can hear us because we are on the agenda down to the update on St. Helena Gym. So um, I'm so glad that you can uh, be a part of this. 
So, Mr. Odding, if you or Mr. Corbin. I'll, I'll be glad to uh, take uh, the uh, update for okay. St. Helena Gym. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Rob Corbin. I am the uh, bond referendum program manager with CBR and Geary. Thank you very much for the opportunity to provide the update for St. Helena Gym renovation project. With us today is the project manager with CBRE Geary, Augustine Vargas. Uh, just in case uh, we have any questions that arise at the project level, uh, Augustine has been kind enough to join us. So I guess without any further ado, uh, Robin, if you pull up perhaps those uh, floor plan and the elevations so that we can share with the participants the uh, latest set of floor plans that are planned for the gym renovations so that people can sort of see them. And then after a little bit, maybe flip over to the next uh, um, page of that document so you can see the elevations. But what I'd like to do is uh, begin with sharing some of the project related history on the gym renovation project. Uh, McMillan has the Smith is the designer of record and for this gym renovation project, they began uh, their design services in December of 2020. Uh, as progress was being made uh, in January, we held a community outreach, outreach meeting to review the improvements that were planned for the gym. And that took place in January of this year. Um, by May of 2021, we had uh, received a CD estimate uh, and unfortunately, at that time, that estimate was indicating that there was a major budget bust. And so what we did, we rolled up our sleeves, we looked at the drawings, and what we had determined was that the scope of the project had grown beyond what was originally the approved scope for the project. So we held meetings, and uh, the results of those meetings was moving forward with a redesign. McMillan, uh, Pass, and Smith uh, submitted uh, middle of June a revised set of construction documents. We reviewed those, and unfortunately, we realized that some of the items that we had previously discussed had not been captured. So McMillan, Pass, and Smith needed just a little bit more time to capture those remaining items. And by June 28th, they were able to uh, release the final gym bid documents for distribution and pricing. Uh, the schedule on this project was originally showing the completion of gym renovations occurring by January of 2022. Um, our construction manager at HG Reynolds in conversations with them as this project continues to move forward, they're still aiming to complete that gym renovation per the original schedule. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm gonna share a little bit more on this topic of the GMP. We don't have a final GMP proposal at this time. And until we get that GMP proposal, it's real hard for us to comment on the validity of that schedule. So as you see in the next report I'm gonna give you, you'll, you'll see some yellow lights specifically uh, for that gym renovation work to address those concerns. But our gym, our GMP update, um, we received uh, a preliminary GMP proposal yesterday from HD Reynolds. Uh, with the preliminary GMP proposal, it is already being evaluated uh, while we wait to receive the final updated GMP from HD Reynolds. However, based on the preliminary GMP proposal amount that came in yesterday, it appears that we still have a fairly significant uh, budget challenge that lies ahead. Um, we, we've held discussions this, today uh, based on this preliminary GMP, and we feel that there may be some additional scope that went beyond the original intent. It was a nice feature, for example, to uh, look to provide a entry vestibule to that gym but we think that there may be uh, an alternative, less costly means to provide a protected entry into that gym. So we're gonna open up those conversations and uh, uh, see where that leads us. But what we've got is um, the uh, goal 
for finalizing the GMP as well as any additional funding that it may require so that we can bring uh, a recommendation to the full board in August for that this work can uh, be put under contract. So wanted to uh, sort of stop right there. Uh, Robin, if you go to the second uh, slide there, which see there, that's the floor plan. Uh, that shows the main gym as well as the interior modification for the various spaces. But on the exterior, we are looking to make some improvements to better modernize the building and also provide a little bit of an architectural feature to help identify where the main entrance is. We want to keep some of that architectural flair as we still look at uh, cost reduction for that uh, covered entry that we're speaking of uh, for the gym. So with that, I'll pause, see if there's any questions or if any additional details necessary. Uh, before we go to any questions, um, Mr. Corbin, can you uh, just for everyone's edification remind us this is an 8% funded project? Yes, ma'am, it is. It and was funded out of FY 2022 funds. And what was the original budget that this was supposed to be? 1.1 million. 1.1 million. Okay. So and I also will right share around. since we're in the middle of figures. Those those FY 2022 funds for 8% capital improvements, there is a contingency figure available for those 8% funds. And that available contingency right now is just over a million dollars. For all the projects for, for all the for projects, all the projects. that's why 2020 it's some significant savings in the jj davis region project so mm -hmm. we have a sizable amount in that project contingency right now so the same might have to speak up. okay oh, we're sorry. gonna have to speak up yep, and uh, mr smith's hand is up so mr smith mr smith your hand is up can you um you have a question I, yeah if you give me a second yes ma'am um First and foremost, um, is Mr. Otting in there? Because I remember Mr. Otting telling me that this project was supposed to be, the gym was supposed to be done by October. So where you got January from, I'm a little lost. Okay, well, before we go on, I just want you to know that who is in the room. Mr. Smith, thank you for asking. But of course, Ms. Cushenberry is here, Mr. Otting. Ms. Cartledge, Mr. Corbin, Ms. Boatwright, myself, Augustus R. Vargas, right? right? Dennis? Okay, so we have a number of people in the room, Mr. Smith. Okay, maybe Mr. Auden can speak to that October timeframe that, that he told, told me about versus the January, where, the, where that came from. Yes. Um, so I think when we originally started this project, the construction schedule was to end in October, but we always planned to switch over in January. So um, when we dealt with Head Start and other groups because of your batteries, um, we, we always talked that we do the switch over in January just to give us enough budget. I mean, just give us enough time to make that. Uh, and that's a good time to do the switch. So you are correct, um, but as we've not, we did not start this in summer, we're, we've been trying to keep that January turnover time. Okay, um, I'm, that's concerning as well, um, the, the, the time frame, and because we had, I believe that we vote on these projects a year out so that we don't run into problems that we've currently ran to now that basically based upon what Mr. Um, not Mr. Adi, um, excuse me, help me understand. What's the guy's name, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Corbett? Mr. Corbett just, 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 just alluded to some issues that we're running to now. You know, I, 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 it seems as though uh, there's been some problem in the, in the planning of this project. That, that's 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 what it sounds like. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Our, our, our hope originally when we started this, you know, we started this back in December, as uh, Mr. Corbin said, and our hope was by now to do the construction. Um, but uh, along the way, as far as design project, as Mr. Corbin mentioned, 
Um, we have not yet gotten to a proposal from the contractor that we're ready to accept. So because of that, we have not released the project to begin. So you are correct. We are behind schedule. We would have liked to have started by now. Um, we're trying to push it through to get it started as soon as possible, but at the same time, making sure that uh, the project uh, covers all the scope uh, issues with the project while um, maintaining as close to the budget as possible. With that being said, maybe we need to find another contractor. If, if the contract is if there's been a problem with the contractor, then maybe we might need to find another contractor because I'm not a, I'm not a, a eager to push it through just to get it pushed through you know these are taxpayers money that we're dealing with and at at all costs you know i expect i intend to do things in a in a not only in a timely fashion but also things that will be that will it, that will help this uh this uh this uh building out in this school in the school th that will help longevity versus short term I, in other words i don't want to take a short term a short term move i said i said anything thinking thinking up long long term in other words, it, it does bring me some concern that, that this was not brought to the board when when the, when the contract was having problem. This is something that should have came before the full board so that we were aware. Because in in in, in, in previous practice, when there were problems with contractors or even other companies that uh, bonding companies that was dealt with the district, then that was brought to the board. So my question would be, uh, why this, does this need to go before the board? Well, I mean, the, that that's the best will of the committee. I would say, and in, in if the board chooses for us to look at another contractor, we'd be glad to do that. I would say if that is the choice of the board, that that would be a significant delay. And I would uh, I would suggest not to go that route in the, in the interest of, you know, um, trying to do this in as timely a fashion as possible. Um, I think... Um, we are within, you know, we're hopeful in August to bring a proposal to the board that uh, everybody understands and, and can come to terms with so that we can move forward with this project. If we have to go out to another contractor, if that's the will of the board, I'd say we're six months plus from starting um, at the very least. All right, Ms. Ms. Boatwright has a question. Um, following up, you said that we had significant cost savings on the J.J. Davis group. Mm -hmm. And so is that the normal procedure that if there's a cost saving, that is what funds the contingency? Or do we have a separate contingency fund and the J.J. Davis funds augmented? So that we do start every year with a set contingency of smaller right, contingency. For the projects. And then if projects are completed and their savings, that money goes into that project contingency fund. That's where they go. So we have right now about a million dollars in the 2022 yes, contingency fund. Um, what, so can I ask a follow-up? Sure. What were the issues with budget? Are they sort of what we're seeing everywhere in terms of material costs and labor costs, or were there some exceptional budget issues? Uh, that, that's a, a single answer, yes. Right. Because <laughs> they had both. Yes. And yeah, I'd let me first talk about the scope. The, the scope had gone beyond what was the original group scope when we got that estimate set of construction documents in May. And that caused a portion of the budget problem. The other problem is, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it in the overall construction updates, but we're really in a very uh, unstable market right now. The market prices are drastically changing on a, almost a daily basis. And when we get into that, but I'll share some examples where for, you know, like structural steel, the price since February to June has gone up 100%. Roof decking has gone up over 300%. So some of this is just unprecedented. I've never seen this in my career and I've got a healthy career and Robert's career, same thing. And because of the unstable, unprecedented market is one of the things that we're having to deal with. Mr. Stribinger. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you, you said a couple of times the scope has increased. Um, how, does, how did that happen? How did the scope increase? 
Well, I mean, uh, I, I would say, you know, the architect meets with, we met with the public, we met the principal, they met with our staff. And from what they heard um, that was being requested from that project, they came back with an initial set of drawings that was priced that had, I would say, some things that it would be great if we could have afforded them, um, but they were not part of the original scope. Um, I'm trying to think some of the- I got some examples where at that point in time, those drawings showed clear stories. That's an older gym building that has you know, served the district quite well, but still has longevity going forward. But to add those clear stories brought in a, Additional cost okay. for the clear stories of windows up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and in a gymnasium, that is one of those areas that are a little touchy because they can introduce some shadowing or light variances, but it's not part of the original scope. And it was causing us to uh, do additional structural reinforcing of the walls as well as just the cost change to remove the brick and put that in. That wasn't part of the original scope. It's a nicety, let's remove that. Uh, another example was uh, a ticket booth. It doesn't sound like a lot, but at an elementary school, this is non-typical for a program space. And that ticket booth was so instrumental and prevented us from maintaining the plans for the gym improvements to stay within the existing footprint. So we were looking at a larger addition that wasn't necessary. So those are some of the examples that we found and felt that they were the right choice to remove. Who, appro who approves the scope changes? i tell you why I'm uncomfortable. I'm com uncomfortable because the board approved a scope and then it changes afterwards. And uh, Mr. Sherman, I guess the way to address that is, is that we recognize that scope had crap creaked on that project and doing our due diligence, because like you said, the board was very clear on what they approved, so was the voters. And that's what we had to pull the project back to. And uh, that, that took a little bit of time uh, in the spring of this year. Right. But this, what, this has nothing to do with the voters. This is 8%. Um, right. and this was an 8%. My, my, I just spoke. Thank you for correcting me. Right. So the principals, and I think Robert said, you know, you, you, you talk to the principals and you talk to other uh, stakeholders as you're doing the design and you accept input from them. And that's, that's where I, that's where I'm uncomfortable with that, but I think that's probably the way we saw, we've always done it. Um, Cause you know, they're, they're, that's kind of going around. That's, now the principals then are getting input that uh, the board didn't approve. I'm not trying to bust your chops, I, as, and I don't, uh, expect, I don't expect to answer. Uh, correct. Yeah, David, um, I had the exact same question and concern. Um, you know, at what point did the scope get so much out of alignment or larger that it then we proceeded down that road? which took up time to get estimates back on how much that increased scope would cost, which then sets us back further. So I guess I have a procedural question as well as how does this scope get so enlarged before it's drawn back into what its original intent was, thus putting us in this position? Again, when it was, I mean, you know, as we're going along, so that's why we have several stages of drawing review. Uh -huh. I mean, so you have the design development, um, the schematic design, and there's pricing being done along the way. Right. So I believe, you know, we wouldn't have been to, um, actually we would probably design development when the numbers were coming in that were showing that we were way over budget. So that made us say, okay, what what is going on here that's going this over budget? And that's where we do a detailed review with the contractor, look at the drawings, look at um, kind of what the original intent of the project was and things such as those windows, although I'm gonna call them a nicety, um, they aren't a necessity to the project. And so uh, that's when we decided that we need to remove those to try to get us back closer to the original scope and the original budget that we had. Mr. Smith, your hand is still up. Do, do you have another question? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, the questions you and Mr. Scribbler asked were spot on. Those were questions that I wanted to ask too. And I would just like to understand. My my follow up question to y'all questions is this: When that scope was figured out, and it was figured out that I realized that that could not be done, why was it not brought back to the to the original board? Because th th that's concerning. Because to me, what it is saying is that um, people who do, that board members, and particularly, and I must say this for the record, that what we voted on as trust, it does not matter. Because basically after we after we made a decision as, as a board, uh, it, you, they, they took it to the, to the administrator, to the administrator and their staff to, to, to make more decisions. So we have yet to bring this to the board because we have yet to get to a point that we're comfortable bringing it to the board. But Mr. Outing, all due respect, when the board voted on what the project was and what was supposed to move forward. At that time, I don't think there were any more questions. At that time, I think an update should have came back to the board of where their project was and what was going on with the project. Because, because right now, it, it, it sounds like a whole bunch is going on and we've been in the dark on this project. I mean, that's just, that, that, that's clearly, uh, to, 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 that's clearly where, where we are right now. And it'll possibly cost us six months. So, Mr. Smith, at your request, we, we are having this detailed update. And um, so at, at this point, we know that um, a preliminary GMP was brought forward from HD Reynolds. Is that correct? Yesterday, you said. And it's still a significant budget challenge. Yes, ma'am. So where are we going forward with this? <laughs> they're, going, they're going to revise well, we, it? Well, we, we still don't have a final proposal yet. Right. And... They're, they're working to finalize that, but we've already identified another area for opportunity for uh, aligning the original scope with what the drawings are showing related to the uh, entry vestibule that was shown on those drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that a covered entry is very beneficial to go into that gym, but not necessarily the condition closed entry vestibule at an element. Right. This wouldn't be the same discussion if it was a high school. Right. Understood. But because it's an elementary, we went back and looked closer at it, and that's one of the items that we'd like to have them look at. But our goal, as Robert said, is we, we want to get the proposal finalized, get it evaluated, determine how we can bring a recommendation forward in August. By doing it in August, it still aligns back with that original, you know, transition date is, you know, the right way maybe to phrase right. it so that that move in occurs in January. And HDR is a really good contractor. They've worked with this district for a, a good period. They're doing excellent work and I've known them for over 15 years. So okay. they're aiming at meeting that goal and they're gonna do everything within their power to achieve it. Okay, so the, the plan is to bring this forward to the full board, uh, the August 3rd meeting? Uh, that may be optimistic. I would say for, be safer August 20, to say August it would be 17. in August. And if I can make the third, by all means, we'll be in front of you on the third. But just in case it doesn't occur, we would want to say August. Okay, so if it's a second meeting in August, then we'll have another update prior to. Yeah, we'll have an update. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Operational committee meeting by then, and I'll be glad to share the details as well next time. Okay, Ms. Boatwright? Uh, that was kind of my thing, is when it's unaccepted. So. Okay, so our next update. Mr. Smith, your hand is up, so an additional yes, question? Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'm, I still have a concern that, yes, we can possibly have an update in August, but my, my concern is now how line of We've missed a lot. Not just we've missed a lot of time with getting this project done. What all is does it consist of? Can, 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 what's the what's the process? Can we walk through the process? So process. the process of 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 what exactly? The process of of getting of getting this done from now until August. What would take place? Yeah, I can take it. Sure. Now 
basically, HDR is still finalizing their figures. We'll get that updated figure here shortly. Uh, we will ask them to do a quick analysis for the, the, the modifications I speak of. I don't want to wait for Macmillan, Pazna, Smith to, to redraw it. They can draw some hand sketches, have a conversation verbally so it can be priced. With that occurring, then we can take a look at the available funds and what that GMP is and mm -hmm. what needs to be bridged mm -hmm. and determining how that gets done so that we can then bring that recommendation in. That's sort of the steps as I see it. Okay. Right, and, and when you said to for them to rush it, I, I, I'm feeling that we are trying to rush the project to make up for the time that we've lost. And the worst thing you can do if, you know, if you're building a house is to rush the, 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 the process in it and then the house falls down or collapses because it, it, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, it, it was it was it was rushed, you know, and and now if you saying that that they came up with the whole plan, could ESSA funds? Now I'm at, I have a question. Can ESSA funds be um be 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 bought in to help out with this project? If money's an option, I mean an object, can can ESSA funds be be bought in? So, Mr. Smith, I think that'd be an answer that a question we'd have to ask Ms. Crosby. Um, about that. And I think that what Mr. Corbin is saying is that the, uh, the process to develop the GMP will be rushed as opposed to any construction being rushed because he feels I can still meet the timeline of transitioning it over to the school by January. So um, unless you have any other further questions, I think that we can anticipate a, um, an update at our next August operations. 11. August 11th. 17th. 17th. Oh, the operations. Sorry. Operations. Yeah. I was thinking that's right. more meeting. Sorry. Uh, at, the, at the next operations committee meeting. And um, I think I can also uh, say that the, one of the great concerns coming out of our operations committee right now is the scope creep. Okay. Because I do believe it's that scope creep that has put us in this position because the drawings had to be redone. Um, and so that, that, that's an area of concern. Right. So, okay. I'm, so Mr. I'm, Smith, Ms. Boatwright would like to say something. Oh, I, didn't well, know. I was just going to say what I'm picking up and I'm having similar conversations, Mr. Smith, with uh, my constituents and my cluster. Um, but I, what I'm hearing from Mr. Corbin is that what he's saying is not that we're going to rush it, but that we are going to make this a priority it's and good. we are going to get regular updates. And this is important to get done. And that, that the community that you represent understands that, that the district is, is making this a priority. And I think that going forward, it's very important that our committee and our board get regular updates until this thing gets on track. And that's, that's what I'm hearing here at, at any rate. And, and if I use the word rush, right. let me rephrase it because I want it to be understood to that we want it to be done quickly. Right. Important. Different than rushing. Right. Priority. But the, by prioritizing this, understanding what we're looking at mm -hmm. and potential change, that should be able to be understood by HG Reynolds so that they can then price it. If the pricing moves us to where we need it to head, then we could work on a GMP proposal to bring in to put it under contract while those official plan revisions take place. Okay. I just don't want to wait on the plan revision, which takes time, right? and then to price it and then realize it didn't yeah. have the bang for the buck that we were looking for. Okay. All okay, right. I so I, All right, well, I agree. I was I was going to say that I'd like to move at this time that make a motion that this update be brought to the full board. Well, I think what we were talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, that they may not have it ready for the full board meeting on August 3rd. So what I think you guys are talking about is bringing it back to this committee on the right. 11th, and then we'll like go over it as and, and ask all the questions and make sure everything you're concerned about is addressed. And then August 17th, make a very nice firm proposal to the board. So rather, so we'll go another round of operations committee where we can kind of, um, Mr. Corbin, <laughs> then if that works for you. Well, as an option to consider the, 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 the standard from the operating 
Mississippi has often been that for our construction update to bring that to the full board at the next meeting, we could fold in some brief discussions on this at using that tool so that it can be done with the construction update, if that's acceptable. Whatever makes Mr. Smith satisfied. Well, there is a motion on the table, so I don't hear a second. Oh, what was the motion? Mr. Smith, would you repeat the motion? The motion is to bring say how on the update, this how on the gymnasium update to the full board for an up for uh, that's the motion to bring this to update to the operations committee on August 11 with anticipation to the full board on August 17th. Sorry. <laughs> Can we vote on that amendment then? So your motion has been amended, Mr. Smith. And, and, and what's the amendment? Second. So I amended it to say that that the operations committee or that uh, Mr. Corbin bring the uh, more fulsome update. We're just bringing an update back to the operations committee on August 11th with the expectation that there will be a full presentation made to or a presentation made to the full board on August 17th. And I seconded that amendment. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that that amendment is, is 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 what i wanted i would go with the because at some point the community is asking me and they have the right to be updated to know exactly what took place and what is going on in the same way how we had this it does not hurt for us to have this this conversation as a full board to know and to understand the process so i think that for the board to be updated does not harm it any but what i do feel is that not updating the board and not updating the community is 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 a uh, is not healthy on, on, on our part as board members. I believe in full transparency of everything. So that's why I won't be able to support this motion. Okay. Um, to continue discussion about this amendment, um, I fully anticipated that during the construction update that we will bring forward to where the first meeting, board meeting in August, as is our practice, that this would be brought up and somewhat discussed, not at length as to what it will be at the next operations committee, but within the confines of the construction update, Mr. Smith, this would certainly be discussed. So that's why I was supporting this amendment. Okay, well, just any other discussion? So let's, let's vote on the amendment. So aye. I vote aye. Mr. Smith, your vote? My, 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 my vote is a no because, yeah. No. Okay, so this carries to one. That becomes the original motion. Yeah, that's yeah, motion amended. Motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I have to think about it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I think, Mr. Odding, Mr. Corbin, you heard some of our deep concerns about this mm -hmm. and uh, appreciate that you heard them. So, all right, Mr. Corbin, the construction update. Thank you uh, for the opportunity for the construction update. Uh, Robin, if you go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint, Liz, that's coming up. If you'll advance to slide three and four, what I'm going to do is cover some of the high points uh, contained inside of the uh, construction update. So. Uh, let me go ahead and begin as Robin's pulling that up. The first three uh, slides, three and four, they're for Buford Elementary, wanting to make sure everyone's aware that that project continues to make uh, excellent progress. It's reporting as under budget and on schedule. Uh, the phase seven demolition has been completed that uh, mobile classroom uh, facility that was brought in for the renovations, that has all been disconnected and we're working closely to uh, coordinate the relocation of those mobile units to the Hilton Head Island Middle School project. Uh, in the kitchen there at Buford Elementary, big effort was associated with installing the new cooler and freezer. That's been completed now. Uh, we've also previously reported on some challenges with some conflicts with cooling tower number two. I'm pleased to report that that's all been resolved and installed now. And there's some photos there on that first slide that you'll see for current progress photos. And then on the next page, Robin, 
some of the salient points that I was sharing and some additional ones, but the key ones to key in on is our OSF uh, inspections are fully coordinated to occur on July 23rd and August 3rd. And, uh, all in all, Buford Elementary is in really good shape. Okay. Uh, so on slide, wait till the end. You know, what? why don't we wait till the end? Can you do that? Okay. Okay. On slide five, Robin, uh, talk a little bit about Robert Small International Academy. And I know that if we see the slide right here, you'll see that we've got yellow traffic lights being reported for the budget and schedule. If we go to the next slide six, Robin, um, we, we, we received a GMP proposal from J.E. Dunn and it's over budget. We have held multiple cost reduction meetings with the designer uh, as well as the contractor with the most recent uh, discussions occurring uh, beginning at noon today. Um, on July 7th, we did uh, create a, a specific topic to go into a little deeper dive with the citizen-led oversight committee, the clock. And we shared a lot of the, the, the history and background of the project and a lot of our discussions, um, which were very healthy and uh, open, uh, both uh, LS3P and J.E. Dunn had, had representatives uh, for those discussions. But a lot of that was talking about the recent uh, material changes, labor price changes, and uh, you know some examples in particular that were shared. I, you heard me mention just moments ago that Steel prices for bar joists are up over 100%. Roof stacking is up over 300, just to name a couple examples. But JE Dunn has engaged all of their subcontractors and suppliers so that they can assess, assist with identifying you know, some potential cost reduction items, but more importantly, letting us know what kind of a value making a change could materialize in. Um, on that slide there that Robin has pulled up, there's a table over there, and that, that table is the examples of some of those you know, typical lead times, and you didn't hear me share this earlier, and I want to pause so that the listeners understand. In a normal work environment, lead time for structural bar joists is somewhere in the 8 to 10 week range. What we're seeing right now, because how much work had been okay, tell me was. put on uh, pause because of COVID, because of all the other large uh, projects um, that other- Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll Mr. Talk Smith, about excuse me, Mr. Corbin. Mr. Smith, are you trying to ask a question? No, ma'am. Okay, well, I, we hear you talking. I'm bad, that's right. Go ahead, Mr. Corbin, thank you. But, you know, for the Joyce, you know, when you look at it from a typical eight to 10 weeks and what we're seeing in reality right now, is it's 10 to 11 months and we are doing anything that it has any possible sense i mean this week we reached out to steel fabricators up in canada mm -hmm. to see if they were in any better shape and whether or not we could get better pricing or better delivery dates and they're struggling uh, to meet their local needs in Canada and any excess that they have, they're falling short on meeting the needs of the North uh, section of America, so. Okay, Mr. Corbin, would you like questions in the middle or held to the end? Uh, at the end? That way, at maybe the end, so. Maybe, maybe we could get through this a little quicker yeah. and then we can try right. to wrap it up uh, so, with questions. Mr. Earl Campbell, I see your hand is up. Would you mind waiting till the end of the presentation and then we'll entertain questions? Questions? Oh, I don't have no problem with that. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. <coughs> but it's important to know that we've identified over 200 potential cost reduction items. We've at our meeting today, we started to see some of those pricing come back in. They're not completed with all of them. But it's key to share with everybody that we're not looking at making an educational program changes. We want to keep those from occurring as well as major plan revisions because major plan revisions take time and time's money and it impacts our schedule. Uh, but our current plan is to finalize our cost reductions just as quick as possible with the goal of bringing a GMP recommendation to award uh, the, the construction uh, to JE done in uh, August as well. And 
I guess the last thing I'd like to share for the Robert Smalls is that that, that project schedule is being impacted. You yeah, heard me mention it about just you know material in general, but that's why we put the yellow lights on. And uh, with us realizing that this project was scheduled to start construction in July, and we haven't been able to do that, what we'll do when we bring back the next update, we'll share schedule updates with the operation committee and the full border and, and the clock as well. Okay. Uh, moving on, Robin, to slide seven, Battery Creek High School. Very pleased to report that that project uh, is under budget and on schedule. The board approved the GMP amendment number two at the May 18th meeting. Um, demolition has commenced. There's some renderings of some of the new perspective views that are shown on the slide there. And right now, NBCon is really focusing on getting all their submittals uh, uh, into the designer for review and approvals, as well as buying out any of the remaining packages that they need to accomplish. And um, slides nine and 10, just pause it on them because they have yellow lights, even previous yellow lights. And once again, portions of the technology and infrastructure at those two schools are being are looking to be rescheduled to occur after the summer. At uh, AC McCracken Middle School, the previously reported yellow traffic light remains there. Uh, and then likewise is uh, being rescheduled a portion of that technology infrastructure to occur after the summer. Moving along, Robin, to slides 14 and 15. These are updates for Hilton Head Island High School as well as Bluffton High School. We're currently reporting in this month's update yellow traffic lights associated with the new athletic turf fields. Um, we've experienced some uh, permit schedule delays initially when we contacted the appropriate agency. We were told that it could be done under a maintenance, but a week later, uh, we were informed that we were going to need to pull permits. But by that point in time, it became very difficult schedule-wise to obtain the permit by the time we wanted to start construction on those fields, which was right after our graduation ceremonies concluded. Um, we are working with the uh, permit agencies to expedite the review and approval of those permits so that we can you know, find out when we have the permits in hand what we can do as that schedule. But I think it's important to share that those projects experience those uh, issues with the permit, but we're on top of it and we are doing our best to expedite those. Um, and uh, slide 20, Robin, uh, Buford High School, one of our uh, significant projects as well. Construction of the new uh, wrestling and weight room continues to make uh, good progress. There's a progress photo there on that slide. Um, moving on to slide 23. This is the slide that has St. Helena Elementary and because it has the gym on it, there's the yellow lights that I mentioned earlier. This would be an opportunity to share some of the information that we discussed today at the next board meeting. Um, I guess moving along, Robin, because the other projects are moving quite well, they're all green lighted. Uh, let's talk a little bit about project closeouts on slide 35. Um, progress continues to be made on our project closeouts. And the unfortunate thing is, is that we're in a busy season and our attention to our, from our contractors is where it needs to be. It's on finishing up our summer projects. Uh, but on a weekly basis, I have these discussions with the project managers. They know the importance of getting these closed out in a timely fashion. And for most of those projects that you see listed there, we are very, very close. We've received the majority of the paperwork, the design of the records, reviewed it, our project managers reviewed it. We're basically down to reconciling the contingency use and any allowance use so that a final deductive change order could be prepared and routed because once again, these projects do have 5% construction contingency in them. We didn't use all of those funds. So we want to sweep those funds through a deductive change order. And then that allows us then to uh, repurpose those funds through you know, by putting them up in the contingency. Okay. 
Uh, slide 36, uh, referendum project, uh, 2019 financial summary uh, as requested at the last operation committee meeting. Uh, that report has been furnished as an attachment to the materials under the construction update. So feel free to look at those uh, at your leisure. On slide 37, Robin, uh, that's the project contingency log. Right now, we, we had no movement once again in the month of June. Um, and uh, the uh, full details are also pretty sure the attachment. Going to slide 39, our cash flow projection versus actual projection. For the month of June, we forecasted spending 5.25 million. And our actual expenditures for June were 2.65 million. Um, I do know that with the end of the fiscal year, that financial services will look at some invoicing that's been received uh, that didn't make the final June numbers, but because it was work associated for services performed before the end of the fiscal year in June, they'll be doing some journal entries. So that figure will come up uh, and get close to our uh, forecast figure, but overall cumulative total expenditure forecast uh, for the referendum to date was forecast at 68.8 million and our actuals were 62.9. So that's you know, within 92% of our forecast. Uh, talk real quick on here. One of the things we do hope to bring to you in August, we're calling it more of a, a reset of our budgets and schedules. Uh, and and one of the reasons is the off. delay in Robert Smalls. I mean, that's going to have a pretty significant yeah. impact on our um, expenditure schedule. So just that alone is reason to look at adjusting this going forward. Okay. And we shared that with the clock at the July 7th right. meeting. And like Robert said, you know, with the changes that are occurring right now on a couple different fronts, so we think it would be beneficial to do that mid referendum program reset by looking at it, the main things we're going to look at is what do the budgets look like yeah. and what does the schedule look like okay. so that we can bring in that information share it uh and i know robert has challenged me to get that ready by the the, the clock meeting in August. August. So I've got three weeks to, to, do that. to, to, to accomplish that. And I will do my, everything within my powers to make that happen. But the other update that I wanted to do was on slide 40, Robin. This is our uh, community outreach. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see on that slide that we still have intentions to do a community outreach for Robert Smalls International Academy. We think it's important to update the community, but it would be premature to do so right now. What we want to do is make sure we have a solution and then be able to meet with them uh, so that we share that information. And that will take place just as soon as possible. Okay. And then for the uh, uh, last uh, community outreach at Pattern Creek High School, there, uh, what was it, June 25th, we had our groundbreaking and there's a couple photos right there yeah. from it. So that concludes the highlights of the construction updates. And I appreciate being able to go through it. I'll be glad to field questions. Okay. Mr. Campbell, question? Mr. Earl Campbell? Uh, yes. Um, on Robert Smalls, uh, there have not been any cutbacks on the original plan, is it? The, the type the of recoveries that we're in are more like the type that I see associated with product specifications, for example, where you know, by changing, yeah, a good example is uh, the drawings initially showed the uh, uh, pathways being in rigid conduit for the fire alarm uh, wiring. That's not a requirement by code. You can use MC cable. That will never be noticed by any of the end users. It will meet code and serve the district for the fire alarm system well into the future. So those are the type of things that we're trying to look at and, and we definitely avoid making any of these programmatic changes. And we also realize that the some of those architectural layer elements that if you've been participating in any of the community meetings we've done to date, we want to hold on to a good portion of those because we think it's so important. Right. 
Um, and Mr. Campbell, this was a significant topic at the last clock meeting. And I do believe that Mr. Odding and Mr. Corbin are prepared to bring this to the entire board for a much more detailed discussion at our next board meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. I thought you were shooting for August 3rd because the agenda uh, said. I don't know if we're going to be able to get uh, we're put an it on update. The you know, I'd be glad to give like the type of overview that you received today, August 3rd. But what I would probably prefer was let us work the details out and then maybe do a more thorough. Let's just, let's just say this um, our goal is to make August 3rd. There's a chance we don't make it and we'll have to do it the next meeting. Um, but just thinking about our meeting today, I think we, 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 can, we may be able to We made some good progress for yeah, what think, we reviewed today. I think we have today. potential to make all this. We're well, going to put it on the agenda. I, I would like for you to put it on the agenda. I would like for it to be on the agenda for the first one, even just to bring forward a lot of the conversation that occurred at the clock meeting. I think it's important for the full board to know exactly what happened there and the conversation that was had even if you are not prepared to bring forward the entire uh, results of what some of the changes might be. But I, I do think, especially based on the conversation we just had about the gym, it's important for it to come forward to the full board and just kind of keep us in the loop. Yeah, I, I think we will definitely bring what we're able to bring. Right. All this thing. Okay, great. Thank you. So we're talking about the construction update. Uh, this no, is just a, now Robert just, Smalls. Just, Robert Smalls. just Robert Smalls because it is of significant concern. Actually, Robert Smalls update. And Robert you, Smalls can, Smalls. Yeah, it, you can put, since you'll be there, and make sure that they put on the, um, the GMP update in the executive session. So maybe a. For Robert Smalls? Yes. Maybe a phased GMP. Correct. That was one of our conversations right. that we had right now because of what's occurring with the steel market right, right now. One of the items that we're discussing is similar to what we've done on other projects. It's an advanced and perfect yeah. purchase package. Right. Uh, so that could be what comes in as well. So I, I think just sharing whatever, that with absolutely. you. Know, we're, we're, we're looking at everything absolutely. that we can. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ms. Boatwright had a question. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, with some of the stuff going on with Hilton Head, this is procedural. I understand the turf field and what happened and the maintenance versus construction. And I know that I, I understand that permit pretty well. Um, but when I went back to look at what we were getting up until mid June from the construction update was green lights. Yes, it was. But I know from talking to staff that there was never schematics presented, that there was never, there was a lot of concerns in June coming up to graduation that something was going off the rails, but what was coming out of the district was, no, no, we'll be there, it's all set to go. So one of the things specifically said, construction documents, CDs received second quarter, 2021. And I'm looking, so I have this, this is for the field house, right? And I know we're already off schedule. Right, well, it's the, I know we're already off schedule from that. So what point do you notify the board and notify the community? Because I think that as much as anything, that is what's caused all the gnashing of teeth is that there wasn't sort of just like what Mr. Smith saying, keeping the board informed, keeping the community informed when things are going, you know, off kilter. Because I feel like already with the field house, we have, we're off that schedule, right? No, because as of right now, it's got... GMP negotiation September of 21. What's supposed to happen July 5th? There's like a, a supposed to be some sort of owner approval. Design development construction documents. So July 5th is about, so, um, and that's about the time we would come to the school. Okay. So about now we should be bringing drawings to the school. And I think teams mean, I know we met with Bluffton High yesterday. And I think we're meeting with Hilton Head this week. So we may be a week behind schedule, but that, that's pretty much because there was. I don't think we've had an owner review meeting and approval on July fifth, right? That part. That that's part what I'm done. now. When an owner would be the school, right? That would not go to the board. That would go to the school for review of the kind of the floor plan. And I and I Tim may have been out there today. Yeah, yeah. I'm just what I, I'm just saying is just. So that would LL. not be a big picture for a week off schedule on the review of the. Uh, DD set, I wouldn't consider that a yellow light item yet. Would you consider the safety and security update a yellow light since that's supposed to be completed before school starts and nothing has happened there? 
what I'm talking about is I'm not just questioning so everybody I, I, on what's happy. I'm saying, what's the process? And at what point does a red flag go up that says, hey, we need to bring to the board that we are off schedule and we need to let the school know that this isn't going to occur. Because what happened with the turf field was that literally what I've heard is that people are expecting to start Monday after graduation and no one showed up and there was a call made and they're like, yeah, we didn't get the permit. And that is what caused sort of the idea that this is not going, going to go particularly well, as opposed to we had a permitting issue, you know, the updating portion. So I know from my personal experience with the school and my son's there right now is there's no way we're going to make the safety and security updates by August 16th, right? I mean, we haven't even started. I don't think they've even finalized the plans yet. I have to go back and yeah, double check. To be honest, I don't know what we've told the school on safety and security. But just like logistically, it's right, right. July 14th. But I'm but, not sure we, well, I don't know how much we promised to be by the start of school. So I, I don't know. Well, the, they're expected. Okay, so here's so there may question. be expectations and there may be what. This is the conversation I'm having with people is what are, we use that expectation. They're not making a plan B. If there's, if we're doing construction to our main entrance, but, you know, while school's in session, we don't so, have. Okay, a, yes. And actually, yes. So that's what I'm saying. I don't think people are as a, so, I think people are So they are, there is an attempt, that's right, that, that whole entrance area. I know that design has been reviewed. Um, I am aware that there are some concerns with the window, the glazing order time. So I, I know last I heard they're trying to finalize or see if there's any way that could get going because the overall construction time for that was about two or three weeks. Right. So it still has the potential to get done. And those safety security, I wanted to go back and check my notes while this conversation was going on. We we have an amendment with MBCon, amendment number 34. It's been prepared and it's being routed for execution. And, 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 and that is scheduled to commence this month. And I think we, we, we're waiting for some confirmation back on a couple of the material lead times because if you go back to the original type of lead time and what we're actually seeing, that could maybe extend a little bit. We, we heard loud and clear from that PTO group that they wanted that done. I mean, as soon as possible. And so that was something, again, that we put a priority to. But well, there but is an item that, and I don't know all the details of it, and I need to find out more about it, that had some order time issues that we're seeing with all sorts of things that are missing. What, and I, I don't mean to monopolize, but just because I want to be clear. What I'm saying is I'm not operationally getting invested in these projects. What I'm saying is what I think as a board member and an advocate is that when do we need to be alerted that there's a problem? When do expectations need to be lowered or adjusted? Because if people are sitting there, and I can tell you, you're sitting there expecting that this is going to be done by August 16th and it's July 14th, and you prepare the NDK amendment, which will come before the board August 3rd, or does it not need Did not require okay. because of the dollar amount. Okay, so that could potentially still happen, but I think people are getting the idea, well, that's not gonna happen on time either. So it would be better, in my opinion, in the procedure when we have these dates to say, you know, we're, we're gonna miss this deadline and lower expectations rather than just like we didn't get a permit. Sorry, you know, it well, gives you know, upset. Fields, we all know the fields are special. That, I, I know I personally, and I've told you this, you know, as a graduation, I thought we were going to start it. And I thought so, so too. There was, there, we didn't have any information to, to throw out red flags until that Monday that that was behind the schedule. But you understand why people, when they're oh, expecting I, I mean, construction yeah, I mean, to begin on Monday. Oh, we share your concerns. Yeah, yeah, and like Robert said, this hit both of us for the left field. We didn't, uh, we didn't know where this was coming from. And as soon as it made our radar it, we've got top priority i guess what i'm saying more than anything is how do i have confidence when i have these green lights and we're kind of rushing through the construction update and i get i see things like construction documents will be received that that's actually there's not a whole other problem brewing that we're all going to be kind of hit out of left field and have a major pr issue that we've got to deal with with the with our constituents and with the school i don't want to get operational and say you know did this happen on july 5th i'm trusting you guys to put the traffic lights up right but i feel like in this field and some of these other projects into the st helena gym we might need those traffic lights and updates earlier in the process okay, okay. mr smith you have a question 
Yes, actually, I would like to. I was going. Uh, I, I heard you say that we, you want to bring the Robert Smalls, um, the Robert Small situation to the board. I was going to go ahead and make that motion because normally in past pre- in past practices we normally bring that to the board in the form of a motion up under our updates. So I was going to say make the motion to bring the Robert Smalls discussion to uh, to the board. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. I just did. I, I make the mo- I now make a motion that we bring the Robert Smalls update to the full board. I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion? What is that? Okay. That's what they discussed earlier. I so, think that it was a, a motion. To clarify, Mr. Smith, you are asking that there be information presented to the full board in public session, as That's well right. as information presented to the full board in executive session. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, ma'am. That's how I interpret that. Yes, ma'am. All right. Any other discussion about this motion? All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Corbin, um, anything else? That concluded my construction update. I appreciate the input. Okay. And I would like to um, suggest sure. you're here for the Alston driveway. Yes. Is that correct? We have guests. Um, that would, are here for um, an item further down on the agenda. Um, so I would like to see I, if there's a motion to. Yeah, I move that we, is it just the Alston driver also the? It's okay. just the WK. It's just, I'd yeah. like to move that we move the WK Alston driveway easement to the next item on the agenda. I second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Smith, are you going to vote on this one? Okay, hearing none, there'll be a vote, no cast, but it passes. So yes, sir, please. Um, you want to introduce? I'll let uh, Mr. Andrews. Okay. Um, this is Steve Andrews, Andrews Engineering, bring the request forward. Um, I think, Robin, if you can uh, bring that drawing up. Can. You'd like to join us here, sit up front. The mic, oh, is, the mic is there, so that's right a good spot. I was going to ask where that's on the Sure, that's yeah. that'd be great. That's good. All right. So I appreciate your your time, and, and so to finish the introduction, I'm Steve Andrews with Andrews Engineering and Survey, and we're doing the engineering and permitting for the project, and, and then they agree to do some development. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for your time. Let me say two things, Robin. That was some fancy footwork on the plugging that thing in and keeping <laughs> the machine going. And uh, my hat's off to y'all for what y'all do. That's very complex and you all seem very informed. So thanks for what you're doing for the school district. Well, thank you. And I'm not sure everybody heard your other introduction. About- oh, I'm sorry. Dennis Avery, mm-hmm. the developer. Okay. okay. So, so this is a very preliminary and it's a, an ask to just get input from, from the school board and maybe get an initial reaction to the request. So, so the request in simple is this piece of property is just to the east of the school. So on the Walmart side of WK Austin. And the ask is, would y'all consider allowing this road this subdivision or, or apartment complex rather to tie into WK Austin. And we need your permission, even though that's a state road and a state right away, because there's a, a sliver of school board property that separates the apartment site from WK Austin. So what we're looking at now is, is a vicinity map and, and maybe just put the go up there. Okay, so um, 170 Robert Smalls Parkway, WK Austin, or north and south. To the west, this is the um, Robert Smalls Academy that y'all just spoke of and it's being rebuilt. This is Walmart, Paris Island Gateway, and then this is the apartment complex proposed, and then this is an existing cross creek apartment complex that accesses through. The existing road to the Paris Island Gateway. So, 
So, so the connection would be through this apartment complex to WK Austin. The apartment complex is it's a very preliminary still development, but it's about 500 units. And then it, that is going to be a workforce housing. So it'll be young families. Many of the residents there would most likely have children that could attend the Robert Smalls Academy. So this would be an opportunity for the traffic from the apartments to get direct to the school. Uh, it would also give them access to the signal that's now at WK Austin. And as well, they have access to Robert, I mean, to um, Broad River Boulevard to the north. And then just off the screen is the signalized intersection that um, Broad River and Parasan Gateway. We have done a traffic study that's been completed. And the only impact this has to WK Austin, at least by the Department of Transportation standards, is it would require building a right turn lane on WK Austin to accommodate the traffic that would be leaving WK Austin turning right to get back to the apartment complex. So that, that's a, a brief overview. If you have questions, um, I can answer them. Can you pop it one more slide forward, please? And this is just a, an enlarged view of it. The, um, the other document. I think there was two docs. Yeah. And I would just say the layout that Mr. Andrews has up there is the new school there. That's what I was going to ask. Is that yes, that is the proposed new school. So, um, in all transparency, I'm just going to alert everybody that I am social friends with um, Dennis. I did not know that you were involved with this project until you walked through the door. I didn't know. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, so, I am just going to recuse myself from this. And, Mr. Smith, as vice chair, if you would please lead this discussion, I would appreciate it. Absolutely, yes, Madam Chairman. It's all yours, sir. Okay. So are there any questions? What is it? Can I, I don't have, I'm not on Zoom. So I'm just, can I just speak up, Mr. Smith? Oh, yes, I have no problem with that. Um, well, no problem. They are putting these in. You said that this is kind of a rough draft or is it something that's getting ready to be constructed? Yeah, no, it's, it's rough. It's preliminary. So we're just say in round numbers, and, and y'all just talked about how long things take a year out from starting construction. But this is pretty well set that this is going to be a 500 unit. No, that so in progress right now is the survey of the property, in, including trees. And so we're going to have to work around the trees to meet all the city requirements. And there's a good chance we'll lose some of the building. So maybe 480 is where it ends up at, but so just for a general number of 500 units. Such an engineering answer. So, but roughly several hundred <laughs> apartment units will be included in this project. Okay. For, for time, can I see? Please do, since Mr. Smith can't hear, can't see you. Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Avery would like to say something. Oh, oh yes, yes, ma'am, yeah. that's fine. Just for, uh, yeah. These will be phased for timing purposes. These will be phased. You're really talking about uh, ultimate completion on this project. So two, and to to four years, two and a half to four years out. Um, we, uh, this is kind of like a plan that we said, okay, max it out and see what, what happens with these building sites. So uh, what you'll see will be you are, but uh, we don't know what that number is. And I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, I, my hands up. Um, right. The reason I'm asking is, is it normal to get an easement request before breaking ground or would you normally get that yes. after it's normal? Okay. Yeah, I mean, they need this to finish their plan though, because if the school board decides not to give them the rights to come across, they they don't have the yeah, ability. All the yeah, they don't have the ability to tie have to go across 
school district property, you have to rent in the easement. It's about a 50, 60 foot strip, buffer strip along that side of WK. And, um, I would. The, the, the property right. is zoned for high density residential. That's all you can put in there, okay. unless you choose. That's per comprehensive plan. Uh, and its uh, intent is, and I'm sure everybody knows by now, I mean, well, obviously, beside this uh, major anchor shopping retail center uh, across the street is going to be yet another major retail um, attraction. I've heard that. <laughs> it's in, in the plan on that comprehensive plan is to, to, uh, is to move the urban Beaufort um, you know, into these areas uh, and to, to also create housing. There's one thing we don't have much of here is housing, affordable housing. And um, we're, uh, that's, that's the goal here. The only way to get, we've heard it all the time, the only way to get this done is density. Uh, and um, given the cost that you're, you're talking about, you know, we're, we're sort of uh, uh, kind of a stab in the dark of what the costs are gonna be. Uh, we're hoping that by the time we get going, things will have settled. In terms of uh, the inflation that's hit building materials. Um, it's on T5UC RMX. And uh, that's pretty much it. I know that the city of Beaufort shows in that comprehensive plan that connection. Well, uh, one thing I was kind of concerned to know. Um, How close is this to other houses in that area? Other what? I'm sorry. Are there any are there any homes adjacent to what you're asking for? No, it's pretty pretty uh, minimally uh, populated out here, except for the adjacent uh, small apartment uh, complex that abuts it on the what is it? Jeez, east. Uh, which I believe is a subsidized uh, development, a HUD development. Is that not the case? Yes, so it's, and it's about 200 units. So this mm -hmm. would, 500 plus the 200 would be about 700 units that would be able to access this road. Wow. DOT has approved the traffic plan based on the traffic loads they've calculated. And, um, the rest is up to y'all. Yeah, I wish I want to Buford as well. Um, but it seems like if you're coming off Paris Island and you get on, you could then would you expect traffic to cut through these? Or are you going to have some sort of like traffic man or you know just management at the entrances, or will people be able to drive through and cut across? So the Paris Island Gateway, if you've recently been there, has put up concrete medians and. The thought is this will ultimately, so it's a very restrictive movement that could come in and the long-term range would make that access a right in, right out. So it would, it would have limited through traffic, what it would allow are these two apartment complexes to get to this WK Austin right. in the school. We see a lot of foot traffic, frankly, kids going to school. I'm just, when I'm looking at how much traffic would actually be brought towards the school. It, I was just looking to see what would go past the apartment complex. And I, I don't know Buford as well, so. It would be primarily the population in these two apartment complexes. So Carmen, let, me, let me ask you, what, what are you asking exactly for us today? So the plan that we're proposing has the roadway through the apartments tying into WK Austin in alignment with your future road around your gym area. And if I understand correctly, it, it feeds to your drop off area for the school. For which school? To the 
um, w, uh, Robert Small Academy. Where's the drop off on this? Robert, where's the drop off on the new school? Because so, it looks like it's just the back of the field. It's not. Yeah, I mean, so parents would come up here. So parents will stack and come and stack both ways, come up here, and they go to the front of the school. And then they come back around. The, but if I can give you, so the concern would be as of right now. Um, so there is going to be a benefit with the new school that will get more parents off of the road. Off of Austin? Yeah. As of right now, parents stack all the way up and down Austin. And our concern would be that re residents of this area be concerned of all the traffic that school lets out and gets in. Um, and so when we do with the new design, we'll be able to stack more parents off of Austin. Do I know right now if we'll get all the parents off? That hasn't been studied, I'd say, and I do not know. Um, I would say our drive does meet the OSF requirements for what we're required for stacking, but I do not know that we'll get parents off of the vehicles. In my, just on a staff opinion, my question is, is there a benefit of this for the school district? And my answer is no. There is no benefit to the school district. Well, I guess my main question too, and sorry, Mr. Smith. Well, go ahead, take away. <laughs> I can't see you either. Um, is just the timing because we don't know exactly what's gonna happen with the new school or with the apartments. It just seems like maybe, I don't know. It, I, I get nervous about approving an easement and then not knowing, like you said, how it's gonna, the school's gonna be impacted. And let me just say this, um, Walmart has been asking for this for years and we have never allowed Walmart. So See, that's concerning. When you do this, you're going to have to allow Walmart. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, just know that. So once you approve this, you're approving Walmart to tie into WK Austin. Mm -hmm. in, in my opinion, or you'd have a tough time saying that. I just wanted to ask, so is the main entrance, is that on Broad River Road? Is that going to be like the Correct. main that's entrance where the there? Will be. Okay, and then you can also go down that Ambrose Run to intersect Paris Island. Correct. So there's two different ways to go in and out. So if you had a student at our school, you could still go out Broad River and go down and then turn on to Austin, right? And Correct. Go into, Robert, you were saying, the way. You basically so go in that the pedestrian way. path, yeah, we have no concern. No, but I'm saying that if you had a child at the school, you could be go out the main entrance down Broad River, turn onto Alston, and then Actually, it looks like you're going to be. It looks like this road is going to go right where. Our if it's is. right turn only, actually legal. I'm not what right. Is if it? it's right turn only, you couldn't go into our line across the street. No. No, I'm just going straight in. Right? No, she's no, saying if you go up to. No, I was trying to figure no, out. Just, I was trying to figure out how to put the best jacket. You're talking about right. Mm -hmm. No, I was saying if you were. That's a so two questions. That that is the main access to from the apartments to WK Austin. That access would be full turn movement, but we have completed a traffic study that DOT gave a thumbs up on. And the only mitigation is to provide a right turn lane on WK Austin onto mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Um, That's the entrance of the apartment. I would just make sure that the main entrance is. Thank you. Mr. Scribbiger, or Mr. Campbell, would you like to uh, possibly give your input on this? I don't really have any questions. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't have any 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 uh, question about it because once this new school is built, I think you won't have that much traffic coming that way. Okay. okay. Mr. Campbell, would you have me I'm putting this, Mr. Uh, Mel? Okay. Um, I think that 
I, I couldn't support this right now because I think we're put we're possibly putting the cart before the horse before we we'd actually know exactly what's going to go up with the Robert Small School. So I do have a lot of concern with this. Um, maybe if Mrs. Boatwright, uh, what, I'm not sure what you're thinking about this is, but I'm I'm very uncomfortable with this right now. I feel like you and I should not make this decision because I think that um, what concerns me, I think that a Berlin affordable housing is great, and I think the school should support that. So I'm not against it. I have a lot of concerns about Walmart because I know that that's a lot of traffic and there's people there at different, you know. That's a whole different issue. I don't understand exactly how once we get the new skilled school built, how that's going to impact the traffic patterns. So I feel like right now for two board members to decide whether or not to grant this, I think I would be comfortable with continuing discussions about it. I don't know if we could bring it to the full board or have it come back or. You're not going to be able to grant the needs. No, no. You would I'm grant saying. the recommendation to the full board. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't feel like I can recommend this to the full board, but I might be able to recommend ongoing conversations to the full board because um, I, you know, I think it'd be great if there's a lot of families there and, and they can drop their kid off and get out. I think that's fantastic. I don't like that Walmart can tie into it because I know what that's going to mean, you know, for people coming through there. But I mean, what would you recommend folks as far as, I don't know what the process is. Can we have, bring this to the board for discussion? You just won't say anything, Mr. Drew? Oh. Um, oh, yeah, Mr. Smith is leading it, so I don't want to interject. <laughs> I'm just I mean, I mean, well, I mean, well, if she wants to say something at this point, I have no problem. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm all for it. I mean, but I don't see a problem with bringing it to the full board for discussion. But you go ahead, Ms. Fidgets. No, sir. I, I would like to stay out of this conversation. I mean, I would. I guess I'll bring it down to earth to or bring it more real to you. I guess because you're going to have the same thing if the building. Very same scenario, low uh, affordable housing requesting access to the back of Hilton Head campus. And so it is the same scenario yep. there. Um, I'm a Hilton Head person. That's why I don't know if you agree as much. That's what I'm saying. I, I support affordable housing. I support, I don't have a problem necessarily with Birdwood. The two things I don't know are what the traffic pattern is going to be like. I don't feel like we have, do you, do you feel like we have a real handle on what that's going to be? Like, can you pretty no. confidently predict? So that's common number one. And then the second thing is I would really like to more thoroughly look into the fact that Walmart could be going up and down because that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of traffic at three o'clock. I mean, I, and that's more a question for Wendy. I, I don't know, you know, honestly, what our position is once we grant one. Does that what does that mean? As far as so one? to you two gentlemen, I don't have a. I, I I think it's a good idea, but I have concerns. So I'm not. Re I would not recommend it to the board at this point. But I don't want to say I wouldn't recommend it to the board. Right. I'm being very wishy wishy washy here. Is what I'm so, there a couple other hands. We have, we have a couple other hands up. If you can give me. Um, let's just see what Mr. Campbell has to say. Um, is this in the city of Beaufort? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and what what did they say? So, so the city of Beaufort has Beaver looked has at this plan, plan and like the, the, the city of Beaufort has our like, traffic. Oh, so somebody phone somebody. There's a background. So Mr. Cables. And then the city has a master traffic plan that shows this interconnectivity. But I don't think the city goals and the school goals always want to have it. That's been my short term. Short term. So, uh, so, so the city and, and, and DOT have, have approved this? So, so let me caution. So the, this, the Department of Transportation has issued in writing an approval of the traffic study. The okay. city has only looked at this in a preliminary state and they voice their like of it, but we don't have a permit from the city yet. They haven't given an official approval. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Robine. Mrs. Robine, do you have your hand up? Yes, I do. I had to unmute. Um, oh, yeah. it, seems, it seems to me we have um, too many unknowns at this time and that the maybe the committee should identify what needs to be, what the unknowns are. And uh, I, I think it's premature to, to move 
on this. That would be my input. So if, if we could offer this, we, we did, we knowingly came here preliminarily. And, and as it was mentioned, we're in our planning stages and we're trying to see is this a no go or a go. Um, and, and I like that final statement. We would appreciate from y'all, whatever your concerns are, whatever you need from us to better evaluate it. We appreciate the opportunity to have continued discussions the world is changing right there because now you have, so you're not familiar with this, but they just put raised median so you cannot turn left in or out of Walmart anymore. They put the signal at WK Austin mm -hmm. and provided for a U-turn. So there's already, if the traffic isn't happening on WK Austin, it's gonna happen a few feet away from you. So it's, it's the reality is it's there what is gonna be the best way to manage that traffic because it's not going away. So that's real, the cars are there. And they're coming to that intersection at WK Austin. We would be glad to continue to provide information through Robert <clears throat> as, as we develop our plan. <clears throat> and as we get a little bit more information to come back again and, and talk to this group, the committee or the full board. And then if y'all can, <clears throat> and it, however it would be Good to communicate to us any of your concerns through Robert to us. If you want us to come before you again to have a, a conversation like this, we would welcome that. So, Mr. Smith, <clears throat> I think what I could do at this point is make a motion to table this item. Oh, Mr. Audience. You, well, I was just going to say, like I said earlier, I know Walmart's been looking to connect for some time. Kind of to add on to what Steve's saying, I know I know that is the county's main traffic goal is to bring in WK because that's why that traffic light is there. I hate to lump you in with Walmart, but I'm gonna, okay. I mean, I'm gonna lump you in because to me, they're kind of the same. Once you do one, you can go to the other. Um, one of the things with the Bluffton uh, Growth Committee, we're bringing on or hope to bring on a land consultant. One of the things I was wanting to do once we get a land consultant on board is ask them to evaluate the value of that easement to Walmart so that we would then um, negotiate from there, if you want to do it, um, negotiate from there the connections and I'll put them in that same, their value is not as much as Walmart, obviously. But we don't want to give away the horse at this point, right? That, that would be my, I think it is something that you really seriously, would have, if you're gonna, I said earlier, does this have any benefit to the school district? The answer is no. If it becomes financial, possibly yes. If you look at the community as a whole, there is a big benefit to the entire community in that area, allowing that connection. And actually the county set it up for that to happen. So Mr. Smith, I think what might put this to a close is I could make a motion to table this issue uh, pending further investigation. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Smith, David's hands up. Uh, uh, I was, uh, I, uh, I'm going to him, but I don't think that we would, it would be, uh, we could table it with an indefinite time on it, but uh, yeah, hold on. Robert's rules, if you table something, you basically set it on the back table and then you, you would have to make a motion to bring it back in. You could postpone it to a specific date or postpone it indefinitely, but if you table something, that means the committee saying, we will make a specific request to bring this back in at sure. a time. So I was gonna say, if we table it pending further information. Okay, Mr. Scribinger. Of that. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Um, it's premature to deal with this. And my only other point is uh, I, I like affordable housing too, but that's not our job. Our job is to do what's best for the district. And Robert's uh, summary is that this really has no advantage for the district. So uh, I think we need to take our time. Uh, if there's a financial advantage, then great. But if there's no advantage, then there's no need to, to uh, labor too much over it. Okay. So, Ms. at this time, would you like to table it? You have to, I think you have to second it. Do you have table in this discussion until, what was your pending further information? It hasn't succeeded as a motion. Ms. Fidrick can't second it. So if you don't second it, it just goes nowhere. Okay. 
Your call. I'll second it. So, can I call the question then? What yes, ma'am. I'll okay. go ahead and call the question, yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Um, I just vote aye. Aye. So, two nothing. <laughs> sorry, I'm just, <laughs> because I'm here, I'm looking right at <laughs> Ms. Cushenberry. No problem. Okay, Mr. Thank Andrews, Mr. Avery, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. And I echo Ms. Ingrid's um, point about affordable housing is important. Um, so we, we, we appreciate you coming. Okay, we're optimistic. Yeah, I make one. <clears throat> housing, housing types are differentiated, stratified, stratified in various ways. <clears throat> Affordable housing means a number of things to different people. Mm -hmm. We are targeting workforce housing. Workforce, better word to use, workforce housing. Please come to Hilton Head. Take yeah. a look, see what you can find. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's there anymore. No, I don't think there's any <laughs> land. No workforce housing. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I do have a question for you, sir. Yes, yes, uh, for Mr. Avery. Yeah, uh, yes, ma'am. When you say workforce housing, so you mean as in houses like, um, oh my God, just that. The place, the place in Port Royal, uh, Mrs. She's worked for a district. Say that again, Mr. Smith. Um, there, there was a, there was a there's a place in Port Royal, Habitat Housing. Is this what will this be when you said workforces? Will this be Habitat's housing style? It's an apartment no. complex, right? Pardon? It's an apartment complex. It's an apartment. It's a, a buildings, uh, apartments, uh, one and two right. or three room apartments that would address uh, like the desserts. You know, restaurant workers, people working in the stores, teachers at the school, right. all that. Like the preserves in Port Royal. Okay, I thought. Okay, I was thinking this was actually a housing, not okay. These are apartments. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Thank All right. you Thank so you much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So at this time, um, we had planned for this meeting to go till five o'clock, so we could entertain um, a motion to extend the meeting. Uh, Mr. Smith, would you like to make such a motion? Um, we just have a yeah, part on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. At this time, time, I'll make a motion that we extend the meeting. Okay. To finish the agenda. Let me just to extend to finish the agenda. Thank you very much. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, Ms. Boatwright has stepped out of the room. So um, we're gonna continue on with the RFP architectural two-year contract for referendum and 8% projects. Thank you. Um, this will be one of the first projects I am bringing in this fashion. So you'll have to let me know what you think. I am doing this to meet the requirements of OE8. Um, oh man, I just had it. <laughs> Oh, OE 81-F, where it says that um, the requirement is to notify the board immediately upon a decision being made to form a selection committee concerning major construction projects. And my superintendent or the superintendent's interpretation of that is um, that anytime we have an RFQ about to go out on the street, we're going to make you aware. That's for major construction projects. So. This RFQ is for professional design services. Um, this is the same thing that we have in place right now. Uh, it was a two-year contract uh, for the architects that are working on the 8% and referendum projects. So when you hear the projects that are playgrounds, that are IT infrastructure, um, that are safety and security, safety and security. Um, actually, I'm just thinking the St. Helena gym, all those are the type projects that are awarded under this contract. We currently have four architects. Our plan would be to have four architects as well. So I'll just, so this is, it was out on the street yesterday. 
I would say that we did put a copy of this out. I believe it sent out an email. I sent it an email to you on Monday night that was in draft form. It is not in board docs because it was not supposed to be emailed to you. Yeah. So it cannot be shared because I should not have sent it out to you all. No, that, that was my <laughs> mistake. That's because it's the draft version. Now that it is online, the, the, you can anybody can access it on the procurement website. So if anybody is interested, please ask them to pull out the one off the website and do not share the one that was emailed. Where is that website? Um, if you go, no, it'd be under procurement. Under so, procurement. community so under financial services for us. So, so, so to bids, community, no, 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 no. At the top okay. community okay. bids and awards. It's on the left. 22, oh, it's right there. You're, you're pointing to it, you can't <laughs> see. So, if you went to community, um, you get a scroll down. Oh, bids board. and awards. Finance and then oh, you, you go to solicitation. Yeah. You're going to have to register, I think. Well, the only reason is there was a typo that I caught. <laughs> oh, okay. So it says we have five high schools. Okay. Um, at the beginning. Yeah, no, I just thought if we were okay. updating we it. We will yeah, make it in a minute. Yep, page four. Got it right there. I got it. Okay. So what I'm going to just do so that you know is, um, is that... Uh, so it went out yesterday, bids are due August 10th. So that means as soon as the bids are received, probably a week later, we'll form a committee and then set a time to review them. And it will be our normal process. Just if you'd like me to, probably the most important part is the description of um, the work. I had that marked. If you would like me to. So the scope of work on this project is uh, invite Professional architectural design firms to submit qualifications in response to this request for qualifications. The scope of this work will focus on district uh, fiscal year 2023, which is summer 2022, renovation and modification projects. Projects may also include outstanding tasks identified in the owner's referendum project list, current five year capital plan or five-year capital plan from previous budget years, as well as other new projects identified and approved during the contract term. The owner may adopt this contract to one or multiple firms based on the volume of work in the submittals. It is anticipated this work will be awarded to four firms. Each selected firm should be prepared to complete between five to $20 million in work over the three year. The owner may at its option elect to extend this contract for an additional year to include similar projects for summer 2023. Typical projects include building additions, interior finish replacements, restroom renovations, ADA and code upgrades, life safety, life safety and building security upgrades, site upgrades and for modifications, Energy efficiency upgrades, HVAC replacements, electrical upgrades, track replacements, technology infrastructure upgrades, camera system replacement, athletic and field improvement, sound system replacement, and intercom replacements. Any questions? I don't see any hands up. Um, so you're putting this out. First of all, you're bringing this to us because it's part of our OEs, making right. us aware. Um, and when is the when are you hoping for these services to be completed? Because where I'm going with this, will our ESSER three funds help pay for any of these design services? Potentially. When potentially, okay. Just like especially to keep you, that in mind. Especially when we talk about the HVAC, right. we're submitting. You know, we have not finalized that list, but there's potential to have a significant number of HVAC projects that could be, um, and those would be ESSER. Right. I think there are a few other things in there you mentioned that possibly could be as well. So I just want to always keep that in the forefront that maybe to be able to use some of our ESSER three funds for those. Okay. Um, you asked when would it come forward? Yeah. Um, so these are due August 10th. Okay. So you'd have a committee done towards the end of August. So you'd be looking, most likely we will bring this to the board in early September. Okay. You're probably your first September. Okay. In the current agreement, fourth term service agreements, they're still open and active. Mm -hmm. I think the other piece that Robert wanted to share was related to the next RFQ that would come that would be associated with construction management services. Right. 
you in August actually I will bring to you the notification of the C construction manager at risk. Okay. So usually that follows a month behind the architect. So okay. that'll be one month later. And again, that's a two-year contract for all these projects that the architects do, those would be the contractors selected for that work. Okay. So we'll make one other announcement, I guess, is that in the August meeting, we will also bring um, the revised AIA contract B133. Oh, for this, this is for the 17th, August 17th. Right. Okay. So that will be, we are revising our contract format, which will be used for this contract. And we're bringing that to the operations committee at the August meeting. Okay. Um, while you were out of the room, we extended the meeting time, just so you know. Okay. All right. Any questions, Mr. Smith? Your hand is up. Would you like to ask a question? Mr. Smith, any question about this? Oh, my bad. I was talking. I thought my mic was on. But um, basically what I was saying was that so basically this project was proposed to us as an emergency, as something that needs to be done. Uh, help me understand the point no, of bringing this point in time. The point of bringing this is that our OEs specify that if an RFP is going to be put out, that we are notified. That is all. It is, it is Mr. Odding adhering to our, no, our OE policies that say, I will notify when an RFP is about to be issued. Thanks for clarification. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. Other questions, we move on to the next right. one. Right, okay. Next item is discussion of use of 8% funds for HE McCracken special needs classroom. Yes, and I will say that Tim Summers, the project manager for H. McCracken, is on Zoom if we have any questions for him. Um, in your packet, I did provide you with just a summary memo. Um, basically, uh, we are doing some building modifications at H. McCracken Middle School for special needs classroom, uh, special needs students that are coming to that school that had not been there previously. Um, we are moving forward with this. Um, we could, we don't feel we could wait. Um, and so we are moving forward with operational funds. However, due to the costs and the nature of this, do feel that this is more of a capital fund type project. So we're asking to use 8% funds um, to pay for this once it is completed, which would require a budget transfer if we're using operational funds. The, I am suggesting that it be added below the line for FY 2023 funds. That, you know, the, mm -hmm. those the other black ones, line that's the one. between yeah. the black So I'm asking for it to be added in that location. One of the suggestions that Tanya did, Crosby did make upon reviewing with this, she would suggest if you do go forward with this is stating the amount. Um, so that would be the 88,423. Uh, if you looked at the memo, we did have an original price for 96780 We did negotiate that down to 88423 which involved there was some casework that needed to be replaced. We removed that. We're going to use furniture instead of casework. Um, so if you have any questions. Mr. Smith? And basically, you would be doing the same thing? Yes, I mean, we're going to move forward with this, um, but using maintenance funds, I just early on, this is not typically the type of project we fund because uh, we're wanting to get this together for the students prior to the start of the school year. This is not normally what we would use maintenance funds for. So what we're asking is if the board would approve the use of 8% funds um, to pay for this work. I thought this was the same as the last motion that you were just bringing this as an OE to, to, to let us know. No, this is something the board would have to, a motion would have to be made and the board would have to approve it because we're asking for the use of expenditure of 8% funds. Okay, Ms. Boatwright. So, okay, so if it goes below the black line, is it just, oh, sorry. So if it goes below the black line, there's no guarantee that it will make it above the black line, right? Right, other than we do have contingency funds already sitting up there. Like you asked the question earlier, do we have some already in that year? So in FY 2023, we already do have some. So those could go ahead and be moved down if funds don't occur to pay for this. 
we also have some funds that um, y'all are working through from past years, whether you're gonna move it to FY 2023. Yeah. So this wouldn't have to occur immediately, but if those funds do come here, then they could be used to pay right. for this. So you're just saying you'd like the option if we have money left over and we're not actually taking something above the black line mm -hmm. off. No. Because I think we had issues after our last discussion about how much money. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm expecting that money, which it may or may not, but it may come forward. And if that money comes forward, you know, this, this is an exact example of what could be used to with that, that money from past years. Right. And so that conversation about bringing forward, if I, I'm trying to remember fiscal year 18, 19 yep. and 20, 20 was like 1.4, somewhere right around that. there. And so it was discussed um, in the policy committee. Okay. All right. So just so you know that um, it was discussed in the policy committee and it's also then going to be discussed in the next finance committee. In that, there is the board OE that says all unused 8% funds will be rolled forward and reduce the debt issuance accordingly. So just so you know, it's not decided yet. It's kind of working its way through to look at it from all angles, but um, it, it's, it could happen. So the other option you would have would be to dedicate some of those past funds to this project. Right. So if you, if, you know, so you could say, um, you know, this is 88,423. I, I moved to dedicate 88,423 from FY 2018 funds to be used for this purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's your other option. Well, do we have a, I'm sorry. Right. I, again, I just, I just think that that goes against the current board policy because the current board policy has two parts to it. You roll it forward and you reduce the debt issuance. And so by saying, okay, that unused money will now just be used for this. I'm not saying that it doesn't no. make perfect sense. We just have to look at the policy again and the finance committee is going to be doing that at their next meeting. Um, I commend you for moving forward with this. There's uh, a need for it. We're being proactive and moving on it. And so, so I, I will will continue to work on finding the financing for it. Yes, but that could we use extra money for this? I do not. Know. Number one, it has to be part of your ESSER plan, and I don't know where this would fit in our ESSER plan. So, to me, I, I mean, special education is one of the big categories, is it not? That may be more of a question for Tanya, but I, I'm not aware of how that might fit in the ESSER. Just because it seems to me like we're just kind of betting that we're going to have money left over, and I don't know if well, we are. Well, here, here's the thing: we got to move forward. It's just a major right, you're gonna hit. You're going to do it anyway. We're going to so, do. It's a major hit to maintenance, right? And what that those funds are coming out of your operational funds. So what that's doing is driving up your budget and your operational. If, if y'all decide to start moving eight percent away from being used to project like this, what that's going to your, your operational expenses. Are going to be. But what I think is, you know, something I've observed in my six months on the board, we don't have a good, like, emergent or no. acute problem. It's the same thing in healthcare. You know, you've got these things you can plan well, six months out, and you've got emergencies, but we don't have this acute, it has to happen, but it's not an emergency. So but, we're creating that. All this is a, a work in progress, I'd say. We're trying, on our side, to figure out how to address needs like this. So this is our first time bringing something forward as like a line item. Mm -hmm. but one I of the things, well, I just, one of the things Tanya's talking about is we need to add more below the line to fit like the next one's going to be roof repairs. Right. This is this, oh, yeah, you know, talk about roof repairs. and roof repairs can be anywhere from 2000. So they may pop up and like this one, it may be close to 100,000. So how do we, I mean, that again would go to a maintenance operations fund and what we may need to do is have a line item below the line and say FY 2023 that is more a, a catch all or root or some system that can work. This like an 8% yeah, fund emergency. balance to be used in emergencies. Well, yeah, well, or, we, yeah. we fund emergencies like Whale Branch. That we, you know what I mean? Like we have like, but we don't have an acute where it should be done within the next, you know, kind of thing. I was going to say, maybe we should have finance look at this in the context of the, because one of the conversations we had a policy. Well, I was just on the call, but was bumping up our 8% limit from 20 to 25, which I think is long overdue. Or, you know, we, have, we haven't talked amounts, but just theoretically, but maybe within that we should create on your recommendation an amount that would be available 
for um, quicker use. So I just think maybe we should make a motion that finance also see this as part of their discussion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as far as, you know, approving either of these, you basically have a year because, you know, this we're paid for, it's in operations fund, but that money is taken out. But it's identifying a problem that we don't have. A right, for. right. No, right. yeah, yeah. So if right. we're going to have this holistic conversation about 8%, how we fund it, Absolutely. how we roll it forward, maybe as fine as, I'm assuming they're going to take it up at their next meeting. Yes, right? so they are. Maybe you should talk at the next finance. You should bring this forward. Well, we're in session as the whole group, so it's not bounced back from that's the what committee. I mean, committee. That's another problem. I would do. It's like committee. I, mean, people. I would be glad to. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, let's let's should I make a motion? Absolutely. Okay, so I would like to move that the operations committee recommends discussion of a what would you call it? A short term eight percent, a more immediate eight percent. Me with language here. I heard you say emergency no. use, but I don't think I think emergency use is separate. Well, there's a, like if there's a fire or there, you know, someone drives their car into a classroom, we're going to talk. It's unforeseen. It, it, it's it, it's unforeseen urgent. Yeah, right. urgent. Right. We it's have something planned. called unscheduled repairs. I mean, that is so. Could we say unscheduled capital projects? Yeah. To, um, to look, so I move that the operations committee recommend to the finance committee to. Uh, begin review. Um, no, you're struggling. fine. Keep going. <laughs> to begin so review of uh, the potential for an unscheduled capital project expenditure. Second. I would just hate it when I start making motions. I move for We bring it forward to. Do we, I, I think we should because I, what I'd like to see. In my opinion, is just have finance look at this and then finance bring this whole financial piece to the board, including the policy, the and, policy and how that and impacts what we're able to do, our flexibility with what we're able to do. Knit it all together. To I think that this should, should um, be something that we discuss. Okay. Okay. okay, so Mr. Smith, um, Ms. Kirshenberry just needs to read the motion back first for clarification. I move that the operations committee recommend to the finance committee to begin review the potential for an unscheduled capital project expenditure as part of debt funding. Is that right? Sure. 8% debt funding? I don't know. So that's not a little, I'll just, I think okay, just leave it that way. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Smith, did you hear the, um, the entire motion? I believe you seconded it. Uh, yes. Um, no, I do have concerns. Uh, I was hoping this would go to the full board because I think this is something that needs to go to the work session. You know, I think this is going to take a lot of discussion and a lot of going back and forth as in do do our do our policies. <clears throat> I think this is something that possibly needs to go to a work session. I don't disagree with you, Mr. Smith, but finance is already taking up part of this. And so my thing is, well, I would like the finance committee to get this piece added in they can look at it, they should determine that, it, I mean, obviously it's gonna to have to come before the full board and then finance will kind of merge these ideas and bring the right. whole thing up at a full board. So my hope would be that finance committee would recommend to the full board um, to look at this as part of a complete financial funding package. Financial and policy. So and the right. whole thing, because they're looking at both and we can't do one without the other one being looked at. They've, they're already, finance is already taking up a percent, a, a portion of this. So we would just be adding to it. Right, they tabled it at their last meeting to be brought up at the next meeting is what I was told. So it's already halfway on the docket. Okay, so so we would, we would want to, uh, in the motion, does it says does it says financial and policy in that motion? We policy, want to ask policy committee looked at it a couple of days ago. It is now at the financial committee level. Okay, and how would y'all feel about saying after it leave policy then? We would send it to work session. Or you, I guess you want to send it to the board. I guess work it's the will of the board. Right. Okay. And so I think I, what I would do is I'll show up at that finance meeting and be like, hey guys, we need to move this to the full board. Right. But we want you to see all the pieces as you're talking about it. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I have no, problem. Right. Uh, I have no problem. Mr. Rodding. Mr. Rodding. I was just gonna add, I mean, one of the things that's been really clear is that the board wants some notification or involvement in this. So one of the pieces of it's gonna be some kind of reporting. I, I think so. So you're already doing it and we're looking at 8%. Sure. Well, the, for the use of those funds, because those funds aren't going to be 
uh, specific to any project. They're really open. So I think you're going to want it reported anytime they're used. Yeah. And so there's going to need to be some type Talking of about the fiscal, the previous fiscal year contingency funds. We're saying they should no, be aligned no. with a particular project. No, I was okay. talking about if you do an unscheduled, unscheduled repairs type right. item, right. that one of the key parts of that, I think, to get any support by it is there's going to be some reporting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's something we can bring up with finance as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, call the question. Aye. Aye. Aye, unanimous. Thank you. Um, all right. Last item is very similar. I have Mr. Mark Cole with us. He is the project manager for Buford High. This is the roof repairs that I was seeking of. Um, do you want to give just a brief summary of what's going on there? Well, maybe the summary has to do. Would you like to come, come forward? So yeah, you yeah. got to be close to it. Sure. Ms. Robine, Mr. Summers. The summary has to do with the metal Mr. roof Smith. on the building uh -huh. and. What has happened is at joints of the ridge and also the valleys and also the pits of the roof, there are some ceilings that are part of that whole closure. And what's happened over time is mostly due to sun and weather, those ceilings have worn out. So what's happening is, is that the valleys and the hips and the ridges, wind, broke, wind blown rain is getting up in the closure piece and then getting into the building. So the recommendation is instead of replacing all of those components, which is very expensive, there's a coating system that's a reinforced paint on finish that goes in the valley and also over the cap flashings to seal all those holes that are now sort of exposed because the ceilings have eroded over time. So it's not a roofing panel issue, it's a joint where all of these different shapes come together. And that's every time I've mentioned this, everybody's asked, is it under warranty? Since it's not a panel issue, it's not going to be covered anymore. I am looking into it. I did ask Joe, but I assume the answer is going to be um, it's the ceilings aren't covered. Anymore. Usually flashings and ceilings are not covered. Anymore. Correct. And if they were covered, they're typically limited to a time frame that's less than 21 years. 21 years. So, yeah. But so this is similar. Um, mm -hmm. Total, uh, we, we've got a quote on one section, which is over the gym. I mean, this is a big concern. And again, we're going in ahead and addressing the gym issue because we have water dripping on the gym floor, which has potential to ruin the gym floor. So um, the gym itself is the 20,500, but then there are, I think, two other areas, three other areas. Well, there's actually, yeah, the gym piece plus the auditorium and then two classroom pieces. So there's four sections all together. And those extra sections, I think, had a figure budgeted of about 55,000 mark, is that right? That's what it yeah. says here. So yeah. that, so the total cost is going to end up, we do the whole area, be 75,500. So again, that's getting in the range that I try to say anything over $5,000 is, is a capital project. When you start getting in 75, our maintenance budgets aren't made to handle that. So this is a lot like the other one. Are you already starting to do this work prior? Yes. To, I mean, we're in hurricane season. So the you are work, doing We are moving forward with the gym work. Okay. Um, we need to evaluate the other three, but I don't know if we, we evaluated the other three yet or we're expecting the same. I know we're, we're getting, getting some leaks in there. We're, getting, we're starting to see some leaks. We have evaluated it, but it's all put on at the same time. It's quite kind of the same. It's going to be. It's going to be the same. Can I ask, are there, Mr. Smith? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Smith? Uh, I do have some concerns. Uh, I'm, I, I, I want, I'm wondering how much would it cost to actually fix it versus patching it up? Because it sounds like we're trying to come up with a quick fix right now to patch it up, to fix it, to stop it. But will it be, will it be cheaper to fix it the correct way or to patch it up. I mean, I mean, excuse me, will it, will it be, excuse me, will it be more, more helpful to fix it long, long, in the long term versus patching it up? 
And let me answer that. There's really two discussions. One is in the valley itself, that is virtually impossible to take apart and fix because of the way the valley stitches itself together. So the coating in the valley is really the only way to fix that. We did have a conversation about removing the cap flashings on the hips or the valleys, not the valleys, the ridges and the hips. It's about two and a half times as expensive as putting the coating on. So you're looking at a 50,000 plus instead of a 20,000. Yes. To do the first piece. Yes. Okay. Ms. Boatwright? Are there warranties with this current seal? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh. Are there warranties like if this doesn't work or is there any guarantees that, like, if it's if it has another problem or this doesn't solve the problem? To be honest, I didn't ask specifically in this case, but historically these coatings come with some warranty. It's probably going to be in the 10 year. Right. So because so it's a four year have roof a, issue, right? Yeah, we would have a one year contract. So anyway, you look at it. Right. We're going to have a one-year uh, warranty from the contractor for you know any errors that they made, um, and yeah, whatever the warranty is, probably a five-year or ten-year warranty on the ceiling. I don't know what that is. But if it doesn't work, we'll know right away, and we'll be able to get the money back and proceed it differently. Expect that if it's having a problem, it's going to happen at the install within that. Okay. So, with the previous motion. I guess I misunderstood. I thought we were kind of lumping these together. Does the previous motion yeah. cover both of these, right? Yes. That is the understanding. Okay. Mr. Smith, you had another question? Uh, is Mrs. College in the room still? Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, to Mrs. Boatwright position, could you what what would you um basically advise us when it comes to a loan to because she, she made a valid point, and I was thinking, and I'm glad she said that. How would that warranty us if something happened a year versus a year to two years later? I, I think something I would be more intrigued if something would be in that contract to protect us to help fix that situation because sometimes it may not take a year, it may take two years, or it may take a, a, sum, a summer and maybe a next summer to start actually uh, breaking down. Yeah, so yeah, it's this. Mr. Otting, Mr. Carver, follow up on this, but it's a one year warranty from the contractor and then the flash and the sealant. Well, just, yeah, they will are covered under warranty. Well, right? What I would say, what I was going to say here is that um, the roofing contractors that we use on a regular basis are doing a lot of repeat work for us. And in your, they would have under contract a one year warranty requirement. Um, it would not be normal to put in the contract for two year. I have no idea what that would cost if we extend that beyond that. But what I was gonna say is most of our roofing contractors, if it's a little beyond the year and it is something that they're at fault at, I don't think we'll have any problem getting them to make those repairs because they want to stay in business with us and keep us happy. So if we have asked them to come back in situations like that say that the workmanship was found 18 months later, say, you know, we, we know beyond that this is obviously your problem. And I'd say nine times out of 10, they're gonna come and fix that. I, I would agree, they stand by. They stand by their work. <laughs> right. And then the, the other piece that we're talking about is, and this is, I think what Mark wants to go back and talk to the uh, roof consultant, just to confirm, if that coding that we're talking about the manufacturer may offer an extended warranty. Mm -hmm. What is it if there is one? Is it a five year, is it a 10 year? What are the provisions associated with that extended warranty? And that's something that we can follow up on. Okay. 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 And, and also Mrs. Uh, I didn't understand this to be in that last motion. I think this is a separate motion uh, because I don't think that this motion, the last motion did this, um, allude to that, that that was in that motion? Did this reference that motion? The reason I suggested that, Mr. Smith, is again, this this is already going forward. And um, they're using maintenance funds in order to get this done. But the request is that would it be possible for some 
capital improvements and made percent funds to be used. So it's under the same umbrella as the McCracken special needs room work. So it would go to the finance committee to see what, you know, about that whole conversation we just had about using some 8% fund, some unexpected work that needed to be done. So this does not require a, in my opinion, a separate motion. This is, this whole concept is gonna to go to the finance committee. Okay, thanks, thanks for the clarification. Okay, all right, great. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Corbett. One additional item. I think we finished that one. I wanted to give Robert an opportunity. You saw during this afternoon's discussion that as we brought in staff, we introduced them. I don't think we introduced Freddie. Freddie? Do you want to right. introduce Freddie? I think yeah. Freddie's still on through Zoom. Robert? I don't think he is. Oh, Freddie's gone. Off. He's off. Yeah, next we'll time. We'll make sure we do that. You do know Freddie. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. We all know Freddie. I yeah. want to make sure that anyone Thank you. Well, you know that he's don't in. No. now in the operation. Right. That, 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 that news had reached me already. Right. It, it okay. It's sort of a very important role. Yes, I think so too. Um, all right. Uh, next topic, discussion of future topics. Would you, anybody have anything to bring forward? I have a list um, to talk about from previous meetings to find out if we're going to discuss them. So previous that we have not put on an agenda yet was the discussion of uh, conversations on a process of getting documents from executive session amendments. Yeah. Um, another topic was the 10 year plan. We don't remember how we're supposed to discuss that. Well, we were talking about separating now that we have a new way of doing capital 8% okay. projects. Is it really the best way to have it right. combined with so all that, was, that great demographic material? We so. have AR select a couple from HR and transportation. Right. Mm -hmm. And those were leftover future topics, and so I, I didn't know. And I got the um, OE and OEA for, for the FOIA. I've mm -hmm. got the report for you all with the order ending in June. And I also have it's just very brief, but it's a super tense interpretation, which is pretty straightforward. Right, you right. have to comply with law, so I got that. And then um, I am also waiting to hear from HR. And I got to get with the nurses. I'm going to be this right. next couple of weeks. There's some things I want to get done. Yeah. So, uh, given what Miss um, what, what Wendy just brought forward, um, we talked about maybe having a, a special call meeting the end of July. So, um, please be looking for an email regarding having that special call. A meeting maybe just to have the ARs and, and the OE. OE. And then I've got just that. That quarterly report for FOIA because right. I want to get that to the board on August 3rd. Right. Yeah. That so would be, that would help me so much. I mean, I just want to stay in the schedule. Okay. So I have two, two three things. Well, you, you, the other thing you talked about was the procurement thing. Did you know really put that on the agenda at this point? Go ahead. I mean, any future topic you, you have. Um, one thing I'd like to bring up was the discussion we had about cyber vetting and have HR and talk to HR about that. Cyber, cyber vetting. Whether or not oh, we well, should, talk to, oh, yeah. Okay. If okay. we have a policy, and then um, the other thing I'd like to have a discussion about doesn't have to be in the immediate future, but is as the schools have opened up, having meetings at schools potentially. If we don't have to broadcast with the county channel, if that goes away, yeah, we, we used to broadcast and the crack and so we we, we absolutely did used to have committee meetings um, at the schools. Um, if we continue to hybrid meetings, which means we would be zooming then we would have to be able to do that and then we would report it right so, so we could have that conversation just a conversation about, about right yeah right so you, you know state. and I, the uh cyber vet, vetting sounds like a technology issue uh, it's an hr issue it's an well, hr we will Billing, check people's social google media. social media that kind okay. of stuff right. Okay, so that would go for HR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mr. Smith, do you have any future topics? Sorry, the book is full right now. Yes, sir, it is. That is absolutely yeah, true. Two more because we talked about the contract, the RFP for construction manager. Is that the B133 is supposed to be on August 13th? Because Ms. Fair was on the Allen system and can talk to us about that. So the revised architectural A1 form B133. So we have that on August 13th. Okay. I do, I do think my personal opinion, will the board 
we should have the cyber vetting discussion before the August 13th meeting because a lot of people were wondering what we were going to do with that conversation. If it should come out of, and we can have this conversation right now, should it come out of operations committee or should it just come out full board? Personally, I think it should come out of operations committee, kind of vetted out with Ms. Cartridge. Cartridge, sorry. <laughs> and uh, Ms. Wall. <laughs> um, and then have like more of an idea and then bring it to the board. Yeah. Okay, so you have all those things listed. Um, why don't we, uh, Robin, I'll get together with you on what, um, we'll have a special called meeting the last week of July for those items. And then we will determine which items then will then go on to the August 11th, August 11th, right? August 11th is the next operations right. committee meeting prior to the special call. Oh, yeah, then August 17th. I was like, okay, okay. August 17th is the, is the board meeting. It would okay. be the board meeting. And then okay. August 3rd, I'll be able to do the FOI. Right, because we'll have it at the we'll end of July. July. We're going to have so that one at the end. That. Okay. We're going to do one the end of July. So. And help you that way. Yeah. Okay. And don't you have some ARs? And I work at State Food Security. I do, but I'm trying to. I have a few ARs, but I've well, been kind of waiting for a break. <laughs> I mean, I when, when there is enough time to bring it in, because it's not. Well, why don't you, why don't so you two do talk? The GPA thing for athletics, waiting it for a bit, and we'll do something in motion. Well, that's already been done by the board. That's right. I don't yeah, think that's we right necessarily about. need to bring in some ARs, because that's a temporary item. It's but one I, year, and, and yeah. the board already voted for that right. to be changed. So right. That's, right. So right. that's right. not something they have to come back to the committee, because. Right, right, good. I just, I do, do, do need to put an AR that for the school year this way, like I did with the point exchange. Okay, so why don't you decide if you want to bring an AR to this special called meeting that will be determined the last week of July, because that's all we're going to be working on is an OE, an AR, and that boy. Okay, so let's, we'll, we'll talk and. I'm sure I can be ready by then. Okay, well, I'll that's what I'm saying. Wendy and but I thank y'all for being here right. so much. <laughs> I, I just because there's been so much going on. Right, understand. Okay, so look in your email, Mr. Smith and Ms. Boatwright, for um, and please provide feedback for your availability for the last week of July. Okay. All right. All right. All right great. Is adjourned. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Sir. So right. moved. Yes. Thank you.